In this video, we're going to use the node voltage method to find the voltage VO, which is the voltage across this 6K resistor. Now we know we're just going to label our essential nodes. So this is going to be node 1. And because we're going to use the node voltage method, I want the voltage at node 1. We're going to take this to be node 2. And we're going to take this to be node 3. And we have one more essential node at the bottom here, but I'm just going to take this as our reference node. Okay, now that we have this, let's start to write our node voltage equations. So we're going to start at node 1. We're going to write the node voltage equation for node 1. We're going to say NV at node 1. Okay, when we write this now, we're going to assume the current is leaving the node, going in this direction, this direction, and this direction. So we're going to have the voltage V1 over 4000 to find the current flowing through that branch. So we have V1 over 4000 plus we're going to have the difference in voltage between V1 and V2 divided by 6000 plus we're going to have the current flowing in this branch here. But wait a minute, we have a voltage source that's going to be between two essential nodes. Now the question is, do we know the voltage at any of those nodes? Well, we don't know the voltage at node 1, and we don't know the voltage at node 2. Therefore, this is going to be a super node because of this voltage source right here. So because it's a super node, we're going to ignore it and just go straight to node 3. So for node 3, we're going to assume the current is going to flow in this direction and in this direction. So when we start to write that, we can write it as V3 over 6000 plus the current in this direction. Wait a minute. Once again, we have a voltage source in between two essential nodes. Do we know the voltage at any of these essential nodes? Well, we don't know the voltage at node 3. And we don't know the voltage at node 2. Therefore, we're going to take this as a super node. Oh my goodness. So we have a problem where we have two super nodes in one problem. So we're going to ignore this voltage source at the moment. And now we're going to look at node 2, which is the second node that is going to contain that voltage source. So we're going to assume that the current is going to go in this direction and in this direction. So we're going to have V2 minus V1 over 6,000 plus we have this current source that's actually going to be entering this node. So we're going to treat it as a negative current. So we're going to write it as negative 6 times 10 to the negative 3 and all of that equals 0. Now when we look at this, we can simplify this equation. The LCD is going to be 12,000, right? So the LCD is 12,000. We're going to multiply each term by 12,000. When we do that, that's going to give us 3V1 plus 2V1 minus 2V2 plus 2V3 plus 2V2 minus 2V1 minus 72 equals 0. When we simplify this, we're going to get 3V1, because we know these two terms are going to cancel out. Then these two terms are going to cancel out. So we have no V2s, but we have plus 2V3 equals 72. So I'm going to write this as equation 1. Now remember, this was the node voltage at node 1. Once we started to solve for that, this actually became the node voltage at super. And this was a big super, right? Nodes. I'm going to put nodes because it was at more than one nodes. So we had the node voltage at the super nodes. Now we have to write the constraint equation for each one of those voltage sources. So for this one, the constraint equation is going to be V1 minus V3 equals 12 volts. So we're going to have V1 
minus V3 equals 12 volts, right? I'm just going to erase the volts. For this voltage so I say we're going to have V3 minus V2 equals 6 volts. We're going to have V3 minus V2 equals 6 volts. So I'm going to label this equation 2 and I'm going to label this equation 3. Now when we look at this, we have three equations and three unknowns, right? Three equations, three unknowns. So because we have three equations and three unknowns, we can just use the matrix multiplication method. So I'm going to set this up to look like this, right? I know I'm going to have three unknowns. They're going to be V1, V2, and V3. Now for the first equation, we have three V1, so we're going to have three. We don't have any V2s, so we're going to put 0, but we have a positive 2V3, and that equals 72. Then for equation 2, we have V1, which is 1. We don't have any V2s, so we're going to put 0. And for V3, we have negative 1, and that equals 12. Now finally, we have this equation, which is equation 3. We don't have any V1s, so we're going to put 0. For V2, we have a negative 1, and for V3, we have a positive 1, and that equals 6. So we're going to take the inverse of A and multiply it by B. When you do that, you're going to get V1 equals 19.2 volts, V2 equals 1.2 volts, and V3 equals 7.2 volts. Now the question wanted us to find the voltage VO, which is going to be the same voltage at node 3. Therefore, we can say V3 equals V0, right? We just found the value of V3. Therefore, we can say VO equals 7.2 volts. So this is going to be our answer for this particular problem. The voltage VO, which is the same voltage at node 3, is going to equal 7.2 volts.